Welcome to Write With Love. I'm your host, Sarah Williams, best-selling author, speaker, and creative entrepreneur. Each week, I chat to passionate and inspiring authors about their journey in creative writing. Some are traditionally published, some do it themselves. Everyone's journey is different, and everyone has something interesting to say. We all love love and love what we do. Today's show is brought to you by our amazing fans and supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the show and get some awesome bonus episodes, go to patreon.com forward slash Sarah Williams author to learn more. Now here's today's show. G'day, g'day. I'm Sarah Williams. Thanks for joining me for episode 52 of Write With Love. I'm recording this on Saturday, 15th of December, 2018. School is out for the year here in Australia, and I now have six weeks home with my kids. I'm planning lots of Christmas baking and decorating before most of our family come for the big day. Hopefully I'll get some work done too, because 2019 is going to be huge. The library workshops are now finished. They went really well, and I got some lovely feedback. Thanks to everyone who attended, and thanks to the Sunshine Coast Libraries for having me. I look forward to doing more next year. The Dairy Farmer's Daughter hit the number one spot for hottest new Australian release yesterday on Amazon.com. It's always fantastic to see the little orange banner and know people are not only buying my books, but really enjoying them. And on that note, I would like to share a review. Ixon25 posted, I read this book in one sitting and thoroughly enjoyed it. The characters are well developed with a beautiful romance building against a backdrop of stunning countryside. I highly recommend reading this book and immersing yourself in some Sunshine Coast hinterland goodness. I was really taken into the story, eager to see how it ended, and loved all the characters. Well worth a read. Do yourself a favour and get lost in the Sunshine Coast gem for a few hours. Aww. If you would like to join me here in the beautiful Mullaney Coast hinterland, I am down to my last spot for the writer's retreat I'm hosting from May 31st to the June 3rd, 2019. All the details are on my page, sarahwilliamsauthor.com forward slash Mulaney dash writers dash retreat. We will be writing, talking craft and having fun. I will also show you all the steps involved in uploading a manuscript to distributors and how to professionally self-publish. If you miss out on that one, you can book in for my Noosa Writers Retreat. It's running on October 18th through the 21st in 2019. Come and join me at the trendy beachside town for a weekend of writing and marketing tips. Both retreats are strictly limited to six people, so get in quick. The Australian Romance Readers Association will be hosting a romantic rendezvous next March, where readers can meet their favourite romance authors and get their books signed. Locations and dates are Brisbane the 23rd of March, Sydney 24th, Melbourne 30th and Perth's on the 31st of March. I will be at the Brisbane signing and would love to see you there. I will have all my books as well as lots of free stuff for you. And if you're a patron, you can claim your hug. The ARA website is australianromancereaders.wordpress.com If you love Australian rural romance, then for only 99 cents, you can read six of Australia's favourite best-selling full-length novels and one brand new short story. Annie Seaton, Suzanne Bellamy, Essie Gilchrist, Anne B. Harrison, S.M. Spencer, Philippa Neffrey Clark, and myself have joined forces for a combined Kindle only box set called Outback Hearts. It's available now on Amazon, and we've already hit the number one spot in several big categories, which is great. And if you're an author who would like a shout out on the show for as little as $25, send an email to me, sarah at serenadepublishing.com or become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash Sarah Williams author for more information. Today I'm chatting to yet another fellow Outback Hearts author and fellow Queenslander, Suzanne Bellamy. So sit back, enjoy the show and I'll see you next week. G'day and welcome to Write With Love. Today on the show, I'm chatting to Suzanne Bellamy. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Sarah. I'm looking forward to chatting. Yeah, thank you. 
And um, of course, you're one of the other six authors I'm collaborating with to produce the Kindle-only box set, Out There Cards, which you can buy for only 99 cents until the end of February. But before we get into all of that, Suzanne, tell us about yourself and your writing career so far. Well, I don't know how interesting this is, but I think I was born reading. I swear, I've always had a book in my hand. <laughs> but writing, it was interesting because um, I came, I, I was a high school teacher and a good friend of mine, we were chatting in the staff room one day and she said, oh, I've got this guilty secret. I said, oh, what? Tell me. She said, oh, I love reading romance. <laughs> So we laughed and we said, oh, it'll be so easy. You know, this was quite a few years ago. But uh, one Easter, my husband was away in Nepal and he treks fairly often. He's actually there at the moment. And uh, he was telling me, we were chatting online and he was telling me, it's really cold here, it's minus 14 in the tent, snow, ice, and in my head everything was just sort of getting turned around and for some reason, I guess it was a happy coincidence of events, but uh, while he was telling me that, I transformed it into a Hawaiian beach. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote my first story. It was, it was set in Hawaii because I think um, James Mitchum is probably partly to blame for that. I used to love reading his books and I loved Hawaii. Um, anyway, I wrote little bits here and there while he was away, kept going when he came home, and I finished this book. And at the end of it I thought, okay, what do I do with it? I mean, if you've never written a book before, you've got no idea where to go, what to do, who to ask even. Yeah. So uh, I sat on it and then I started a second book. Then the Brisbane Writers' Festival was coming up and I saw there was a workshop with Anna Campbell and Christine Wells. Now, for people who know those two ladies, they are quite motivational. So I booked in and while we were going around introducing ourselves, I realised I was literally the only person in that group who had completed anything. Mm -hmm. I thought Anna was going to hug me. <laughs> We had something to talk about. But uh, anyway, I asked her at the end, I said, what do I do? Well, I've got this book and a half written. And she said, join the RWA, which is the Romance Writers of Australia. And she said, put your work into a competition. Uh, you'll get feedback. Mm -hmm. You can build on that and you can grow it. So I did. I joined straight away. I was really excited. And there was this competition and I thought, oh, I'll put my work in. So I called the I'd called the story White Ginger and I put it into the Emerald, knowing nothing about it. I came third. Oh wow. And that book was actually picked up by a small American publisher. So uh, I know most of the time your first book never sees the light of day. I was very lucky. Um, I learned a heck of a lot in a very short period of time with that. Mm. And I had these contacts then at the RWA who could uh, explain things and help me on my way. So the RWA has been fabulous for that mm. over quite a few years now. But that's what got, start, got me started writing. Yeah, that's fantastic. So are you writing full time now? Well, I was still teaching at the time uh, when all that was happening. I left teaching two years ago mm -hmm. so I could uh, work full-time on writing. It was just something I'd always, I guess I'd, I'd had in the back of my mind, but that um, emerald mm -hmm. win, that, that really gave me the, the courage to keep going and to do more. Yeah. I think um, I, I really admire people who keep going time after time after time. They submit work and they get rejections, but they keep working on it to build it up and to be better. Mm -hmm. And in some ways I, I kind of think maybe I'm not as strong as them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
you know, I didn't get rejected that first time. And so it gave me a taste for it and a desire to keep going. And so two years ago, I thought, no, this is it. This is something I'm really passionate about. I had by then quite a few books out. And uh, I really wanted to put more time and effort into it. So mm. yeah, I, I said, that's it. I'm leaving. Goodbye. <laughs> and I haven't looked back. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Yeah. So I started writing um, more contemporary books probably, mm -hmm. but uh, I preferred writing in stories set in Australia, I discovered. The mm -hmm. uh, first of them was um, picked up by Escape Publishing and it was a little story set in Melbourne in the CBD and it had um, two characters who both wanted the same building. He wanted it for his past and she wanted it for her present. And... Uh, my daughter had just moved down there. She was uh, going to the conservatorium. And so we were flying down to see her visit, get to know Melbourne, try the coffee. And uh, I really loved that little story, but I, I still didn't feel like I'd quite found my home. Mm. So that one was a, ended up being titled Engaging the Enemy. I got the hot bloke with the bare chest wearing a tux. <laughs> And I looked at it and I thought, it's a really nice cover, but is that me? Is that what I'm writing? Um, I had a couple of collaborations of short stories uh, in Christmas anthologies with some author friends of mine, and uh, one of them led me to Sue Gilchrist, mm -hmm. and she was putting together an initiative that became known as the Bindara Creek Romance. Now, Bindara Creek was modelled on the New South Wales town of Manila mm. and some readers have actually picked that when I've been reading the books. They go, no, oh, it's just, it's very like Manila. I used to live in Manila. I know people in And we go, oh, okay, that's really good. <laughs> anyway, um, she had this idea, this concept of 13 stories with 13 different authors and one book a month coming out. So it would go from July to July. Mm. Well, it was wonderful. It was a rural series and I hadn't written rural at that stage. But writing that story, and my story became known as Second Chance Love. Excellent. Lovely cover. <laughs> Thank you. Second Chance Love ended up... Um, being a bestseller, as were most of the other books in that series. The whole series, it was really a best-selling series. And it led us to uh, consider other collaborations, I guess. Now, it's, it's interesting trying to work with another group of authors like that when you're trying to get a, a complete town mm -hmm. and the population of the town together. And we, we didn't all live nearby. We couldn't see each other face to face. So we... Did a lot online. We had a map of the town created, you know, all the streets and the buildings and pictures that we posted on a Pinterest board so we could see what we were talking about. And uh, we each claimed our characters, who we wanted as our main characters, mm -hmm. um, a few minor characters and so on. And then we had great long lists with detailed descriptions and people, places, everything, even down to the weather on certain days. Because we had overlap and we didn't want our readers to go, oh, but so-and-so said this and this one said that. Yeah. <laughs> mm. But it was such a successful collaboration and we all enjoyed it so very much that uh, it led us to another collaboration which became a Mindleby Outback Romance. So that one was picked up. We, we actually um, presented the story to our publisher, Escape Publishing, and they loved it so much they picked it up and they decided that they would put the stories together in two print bind-ups. So this is one of them. Excellent. So Heart of the Town, brilliant, which I've seen in the shops, which is great. Shops. Heart of the Town is in Kmart and Big W stores. Um, a few others. It's in Dimmicks in George Street in Sydney. I saw it there and just had that lovely little heart fluttery moment oh there's my book <laughs> um it's done really well and that's um the story of a cotton town now 
you know that a lot of these rural places really depend on one key business. Mm. If that business fails, then the ramifications for the town are huge. So a cotton town is really dependent on the cotton mill. Mm. And it's not just the, the farmers and the mill workers. So when we were writing these stories, I particularly wanted to explore the idea that um, the closure of this key business didn't just affect the obvious people, but it would flow on into all sorts of businesses in town and everyone would be affected. Mm. So in my mind, I think my story was got the title of Leather and Lace. <laughs> it didn't last. Because, <laughs> I mean, that's got erotic overtones. Oh, definitely. <laughs> it's, um, it's very much a sweet story. They're, they're all sweet stories in this collaboration. But, yeah, it was Leather and Lace because he was a leather worker, the saddler in the town, and she was a fabric designer. And, you know, leather and lace. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> But anyway, when, uh, when uh, Escape picked the stories up, um, Kate Cuthbert was the main person we were dealing with then and uh, she wanted a very clear overarching story that she could bring together the stories in a bind up and say this is the story of the town. Mm. So... We rewrite our stories to suit that vision and I think it was a very, very clever idea. Yeah. Um, Sue Gilchrist got the first story. She set up the premise of the mill closing and I got the second book and that had to be some way the start of how the town came back from the edge of, of oblivion. Yeah. So mine ended up called Starting Over. Oh. Simple, effective. Yeah. <laughs> Um, in the four books, uh, there are four books in this. I'll just show you. It's a yeah. bit of a doorstep. Yeah, it's a big one. <laughs> it's a great book to take away on holidays. I've had quite a few people have said, oh, we're just heading off on holidays and I've got the book, I'm going to read it. And I go, it's four books. You're going to read four books on holidays. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's it's been going really well, very exciting, and it finishes the story of what happens to the town. And then there is a second print binder called Here to Stay, which is three other stories of the town, and they've been brought together. So they should be side by side on the shelves in the shops at the moment. Yeah, that's fantastic. And you mentioned um, Sue Gilchrist, so we know her as Essie Gilchrist, and she's been on the podcast also, um, and she's another one of the collaborators as in our group so um and yeah it's fantastic what she was doing with those uh collaborations of course you know we all want our books out there and it's fantastic that we all help and support each other as much as we do especially here in australia so yes. um so real mover and shaker yeah and she's inspiring she is wonderful to work with and her own ideas have just given i think a great deal uh, to readers of rural stories. Mm. So for me, she, she really opened my eyes to um, rural fiction. Yeah. Because doing that first book, Second Chance Love, I fell in love with the genre. It was, you know how you, you get that feeling that you're coming home sometimes? Yeah. Well, I had that when I wrote that book. I loved it so much that I decided I was going to write more of my own. So this was my first book. Just one kiss. That's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I had taught for a while up in the northwest of Queensland. So I had been based in Cloncurry, used to go up to Mount Isa because I had friends up there. And uh, I had a, an older sister who was, she loved the art back too. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was very supportive of the Royal Flying Doctor Service. So when I wrote one, Just One Kiss, it was per perhaps a little bit in homage to my sister's um, support for the Royal Flying Doctor Service. So the characters in that one are uh, Amy, who is, she's just earned her captain's wings and she gets the left seat in the plane, which is the seat to be in. She's yeah. the driver. <laughs> so she's uh, a little bit of a tomboy. And her 
new doctor has just arrived and he's been suffering from um, some malicious sexual harassment allegations. Oh. So he left his job on the coast and he had always planned to come out to the outback and work with the flying doctor but everything got moved up after these allegations were made. And they meet and there are some very funny misunderstandings. It's a light-hearted book. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's sort of opened the way for me. I was always going to write her brother story second, but, you know, sometimes you get a character who just takes over, and there was this character in Just One Kiss. She was a bit of a, am I allowed to say bitch on this? Mm, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> she was. She was a bit of a bitch. And I couldn't work out why. And anyway, I was writing a scene in the first book and I thought, I can't write Amy's brother's story next. I've got to find out why she is as bad as she is. <laughs> so that became... Excellent. Heartbreak Homestead. Yeah. And I have to thank my husband for that title because oh. I was stuck. I couldn't work it out. And I said to him, look, the story's about... And I said this woman and she's a real witch and I don't know why but, you know, this is going to be her story. And it turned out to be one of the darkest of the books that I've written because it explores uh, some of the issues of living really remotely when you can't access the sort of health services that you need. Mm. So there's some domestic violence historically in there. There is postnatal depression and a suicide and these are very real problems for a lot of people in rural and small town communities and, and the more remote people are, the harder it is sometimes to access these sorts of services and there have been great initiatives coming through. Um, there's Mobile Clinic, for instance, mm. that I've seen that's, in fact, I think there's a second one that's just being brought online. But things that will bring key services to people who are living in the outback um, but clearly that wasn't available to my characters at the time because they were really remote. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Heartbreak Homestead, um, she ended up looking after her baby nephew. Yeah. Without giving too much of the story away, you can probably work out what happens there. <laughs> and uh, she has to go back to the home that she left when she was young. And she's got a lot of stuff to work through when she's living away from town. Yeah. So uh, the story's rolled on through there. Um, at the end of that, there is a, a rather entertaining meet between the next two characters. Uh -huh. uh, Sarah is the next one. Lovely. It's called Long Way Home. And she's a horse whisperer. Okay. But she meets her partner when he slaps a pair of handcuffs on her. <laughs> And after I wrote that scene, I thought, oh, I'm just going to have to write their story next. And that led to Winds of Change. Now, I just thought I'd show you these two because sometimes, particularly when you're self-publishing, you look at a cover and you think, I'm not sure if this is working. So this was actually the first cover. Oh, wow. It's quite different. Gosh. That was the next one. Yeah. And it just, I, I don't know, it just felt right when I got to the second one. Yeah. Um, it, it captured something of the red rocks, the red landscape of the area. Um, and then this is my very favourite character. I know most authors won't acknowledge that they have a favourite character, but <laughs> about Harry. Harry just touched something in my heart. And I think it will take a heck of an incredible character to unseat him. Yeah. It probably, probably helps too that my dad was named Harry. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, and then there was a, a book six which was called The Cattleman's Promise. But the whole Hearts of the Outback series, it works really well together, but um, the books can be read standalone. Mm. They're all the complete story within themselves, but they all fit into that world and they're related with the characters um, and I think that's something that readers really seem to enjoy. Yeah. I love having that ability to revisit characters and places and to, to spend a bit more time in the world. Mm. 
Absolutely, yes. And um, so you've also written A Promise of Home, which is the book that's included in Outback Arts. So um, tell us about that and what we can expect from this one in the story. Right, well, after I finished writing Hearts of the Outback, um, I wanted to write something a little bit closer to home. So Hearts of the Outback is set in northwest Queensland. I live in southeast Queensland, so we're sort of antithetical here. But uh, it's a place, it's, it's not a real place, but it's based on places around Toowoomba, which is where I live. And it's called Home to Lark Creek. After I wrote the first book, which I called Home to Lark Creek, I realised that that was actually the series title. Yeah. <laughs> so I renamed the first book A Promise of Home and the series is called Home to Lark Creek. So A Promise of Home is uh, very much a story of um, finding your way back mm-hmm. and putting down the roots. So Travis Roberts is a country and western singer, a brilliant guitarist, and he has had a really serious motorbike accident Mm. when we start. So he has this scar on his face and scarred hand. And the scar on his face isn't so bad, but that's the reason he tells himself he won't go out into the public. Mm. He's, He's just become a hermit. But the real reason is really going to be associated with this hand that won't perform in quite the same way that it used to. And so he's just closed down. He he won't connect with anyone. Mm -hmm. And then into the town, in fact over his back fence, he has a neighbour, a young woman, who used to visit the town every holiday and stay with her grandmother. And she is bright, bubbly, beautiful, but she's damaged in that she hasn't been able to yet find how to come back from losing her father and her grandmother Okay, reasonably close together. And she's inherited her grandmother's house. So she hasn't got enough money to do anything, but she gets a bright idea. And so this is where the, their story starts, that she will do her ma- grandmother's home up as a and b mm-hmm. But there is a problem. Aside from not having enough money, <laughs> who wants to come to Lark Creek? <laughs> and so that started the series and finding ways that people might be interested enough to come to Lark Creek mm-hmm. um, uh, sort of informed the characters so I um, created. So she comes up with her B&B and her best friend, um, young woman called Gailis Romney, she works with her family on their vineyard. They're down the road and that's book two, which is out now. Um, yeah, oh, look, I, I'm having a ball writing it, but uh, Travis, Travis and Katie's story is very much a Beauty and the Beast yeah. sort of story. And uh, I, I had a really interesting chat the other day. I was visiting... Um, some ladies at Zonta and talking to them about um, rural fiction. And uh, I read them a little bit because I said a lot of writers will will repeat a motif or a theme or whatever Mm -hmm. through secondary characters. And so I've got this donkey, poor little damaged donkey called Samson in this story. And Samson ends up at Travis's place. And he's damaged. He doesn't like to go outside either. He's been really badly treated. He's coming from a property that was raided by police. And um, he's just too afraid to go out. He bolts into the barn and stays there. And uh, it very much mirrors what's happening in Travis's life and how Katie ends up bringing him out. Oh, wow. Well, that sounds intriguing. Well, it's, it's a beautiful uh, story. I love that line. And um, it's going to be in... Outback Arts, of course, Promise of Home, and we're um, very excited about that. So we've joined up with uh, Annie Seaton, who, of course, is a good friend, um, Essie Gilchrist, Philip and Ephraim Clark, Anne B. Harrison, S.M. Spencer, and, of course, myself. 
So um, it's out December until January in 2019. 99 cents, Kindle only, unfortunately, for everyone else who has Kobo and everything like that. Um, but it is Kindle only. And, um, yeah, so what are you going to be working on next? What's coming out next for you, Suzanne? Well, in fact, the next thing is going to be an anthology yep. of short stories that has come out of the Bindara Creek world. Awesome. So... Because we've, we've written Bendara Creek and quite a few of the same authors have written um, Mindleby Outback Romance, we decided we wanted to give something back to rural communities. So um, we, seven of the authors have written short stories set in the Bindara Creek world and that's coming out um, mid-January and all the royalties are going to go back to the Royal Flying Doctor Service. Oh. So really hopeful that people will get behind and support that because, you know, we write our stories set in this this world of the rural and small towns and it's, it's just a way that we can give something back. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So the next thing that's coming out, but um, I'm, I'm actually working on a Christmas story for next year. <laughs> <laughs> you sort of have to plan a long way ahead when you're in the, the world of publishers. You do. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, that's, that's going to be... Um, in some sort of an anthology for our publisher. And uh, the other thing I'm working on will be uh, a single title book. So something a bit longer than what I've been writing. Most of my stories have been around 60,000 words. I think the longest was probably about 80,000. But, yeah, I'm looking at something a little bit longer, maybe set up around um, uh, Cairns, and uh, in the 1930s of Queensland and the pearl, pearl diving industry up there. Oh, wow. That'll be very cool. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, where can we find you online and keep up with all of your new releases? Well, BookBob's a really great place to follow authors. Mm -hmm. uh, very easy there because once you follow an author there, you can get um, notifications each time they have a new book out. Uh, I'm on Facebook under Suzanne Bellamy and a Suzanne Bellamy author, so either, I don't mind. Follow me on both if you like. <laughs> uh, Twitter, I do my best. I'm not very technologically minded. I call myself Mrs. Techno Gumby. <laughs> uh, but I do get on and off Twitter a little bit. And I have my own website, which is www.suzannebellamy.com. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for this today, Suzanne. That was great. Thanks for having me, Sarah, and I look forward to the release of our anthology. Yeah, me too. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Jump onto my website, sarahwilliamsauthor.com, and join my mailing list to receive a free preview of my books and lots of other inspiration. If you like the show and want it to continue, you can become a sponsor for just a couple of dollars a month go to patreon.com forward slash Sarah Williams author and remember to follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave a review of the podcast. I'll be back next week with another loved up episode. Bye!